Okay, let's talk about linear equations. And right here, we have this equation, 2x plus 3y is equal to 6. And what we want to do is solve this equation for y and graph. Effectively, this problem is stating, let me just kind of just write it out this way, this linear equation happens to be in something called standard form. ax plus by is equal to c is the general form of uh, an equation, a linear equation in standard form. And you can actually graph this equation right here in standard form pretty easily. But what we want to do is to rewrite this equation into slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and graph the equation that way. So it's going to require your ability to solve for a particular variable in an equation. And uh, a lot of students have a difficulty with this. So it would be interesting to see if you can, in fact, um, solve for y and then graph the remaining equation. So uh, this is not what I would say a super advanced algebra problem. You're, if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you're going to have to be able to do something like this. So if you want to go ahead and challenge yourself real quick, go ahead and do this. Of course, I'm going to go through this step by step in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, if you are struggling in mathematics, you can do much, much better. So don't give up hope. What you need is two things. One, you got to be willing to work hard, so you need a good uh, work ethic. The second thing you need is great math instruction. So that's where I can help you out. If you're looking for clear, understandable, comprehensive math instruction, and you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, check out my math help program. I'm going to um, leave a link to it in the description of this video. It will help you out big time. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test with the math section, things like the GED, SAT, uh, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, I have excellent homeschool courses for middle and high school uh, level homeschoolers, so check that out. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to help me out by liking it and subscribing to my channel. Okay, so let's get into this, and um, I'm going to show you an easier version, of, not of this problem, but we basically got multiple different things going on here. So here is our equation, and the first thing we need to do is to solve this equation for y. So I'll explain this here in one second, but effectively, what we want to do is to rewrite this equation in terms of y. So i.e. when we're done, we have y equals, and then we're going to have whatever else over here. So that's our first task. Now, in order to do that, let's make sure you know how to do an, a simpler version of this uh, task, which is solving for a particular variable in an equation or formula. So let's take a look at this formula right here. This is F is equal to M times A, or force is equal to mass times acceleration. This basic physics formula. And let's suppose I said rewrite this equation in terms of M, or solve this equation for M. How would you do that? How could you solve this equation? Well, hopefully, uh, you would be like, okay, um, let's see here. I'm going to solve for M. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the formula by A, so M is equal to F over A. Now, if you understood that, and you're like, oh, I totally get that, I already know what I'm doing, well then solving for Y in this particular um, equation should be you know, uh, not that difficult. But let's go ahead and make sure you understand why uh, M is equal to force divided by acceleration. So uh, when it comes to solving for a particular variable, when there's multiple variables in an equation or formula, here's the kind of uh, trick that will help you out. So the, one, the variable that you're trying to solve for, in this case, we're trying to solve for m. Think of that variable, treat that variable as a variable, and treat all the other variables as numbers. So a good way to kind of think of that or um, imagine this in your brain is to replace the other variables. In this case, it's f and a. Just kind of replace these with numbers temporarily. So let's, uh, uh, for f, we'll put 10. And then we have our m. Of course, we're solving for that variable. So we're going to write that. And then here, let's put a 2 for a. And I'm just making up numbers. But what if we had this equation? 10 is equal to m times 2. Or we probably would see it better this way. 10 is equal to 2 times m. This is multiplication, right? So how would I solve for m? Well, now it's obvious. I'm going to uh, go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 2. 
Okay, so m is equal to 10 over 2. Well, 10 was what? Well, that was uh, what I kind of a little placeholder number for that f. Okay, and then 2 is what I had there for a. So you can kind of see it in that manner. So a lot of students struggle with solving for a particular variable, a uh, specific variable, when there's multiple variables in an equation or formula. Okay, you got to get really good at this. And this is exactly what we have to do right here. Okay, we need to solve for y. Uh, so uh, to do that, you're going to go ahead and kind of treat all these other things as numbers and only the y as a variable. So let's go ahead and do that now. If you want to go ahead and give this a try before uh, you see my work, that's excellent. But we'll go ahead and take a look at the actual work right now. Okay, so to solve for y, I'm kind of thinking to myself, all right, I'm only going to treat y as a variable. So here, this whole 2x and 6, I'm just going to treat as numbers. So first thing is I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. Okay, so remember, just treat this as anything else. Let's say I had... Instead of 2 times x, let's say that was just 2 plus 3y is equal to 6. So to solve for y, I would still subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. Okay, so hopefully you're up to speed on your basic uh, solving linear equations, all these kind of basic steps. But hopefully this makes sense to you. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. And when I do that, I'm going to go ahead and kind of add down in a column manner. So 2x minus uh, 2x is going to be 0, 3y plus nothing is 3y, and then here this is 6 plus negative 2x, but I'm going to write the negative 2x first, so that's the same as negative 2x plus 6. Okay, so here, at this stage, this is pretty close, I almost have this uh, um, equal 2y, but I have 3y, so to get y by itself, I need to divide everything by 3. Okay, so that's what we have to do now. So let's go and take a look at the results of doing that. So 3 divided by 3 is y. That's what I wanted, or 1y. And now I have negative 2 divided by 3x. So we'll just leave that there. And then 6 divided by 3 is 2. So this is the answer, OK? So what we just did was to solve this equation right here for y. OK, again, this linear equation is in standard form, and we wrote uh, we uh, rewrote the equation, uh, the, this is the same equation, but now it's in slope-intercept form, i.e. this is the slope and this is the intercept. So that brings us to our second main skill that we need to um, know how to do is that's actually to graph lines in y equals mx plus b form. Okay, so here is the line. Can you graph this line? Well, hopefully you can. These are all basic algebra skills, but let's go ahead and get to it right now. Okay, so when you have a line that's in y equals mx plus b form, or slope-intercept form, this is the slope, so the slope of this line is negative 2 thirds. The b is the y-intercept. In this case, it's 2, okay? Meaning that this line crosses through the y-axis at 2. So that's the first step when you're graphing a line in y equals mx plus b form is to identify the y-intercept and plot that. Okay, so this line is going to go through the y-axis at 2. So let's go up here, 1 and 2. So we'll plot a point right there. Okay, so there's 2. And you just make yourself a quick sketch. So this is one point that's on this line. So this line goes through this point. Now, what we uh, need is another point. We need two points to graph a line, right? So here's a point, let's say, and here's another point. Then I can draw the line or a point here and a point there. I can draw the line. So you need two points to graph the line. I have one. So how do we get the second point? Well, that's where the slope comes in right here, okay? The slope is kind of like a set of driving directions uh, to our second point, okay? So starting from this y-intercept, the slope tells us how to get to our second point, and the slope is negative, let's go and write it out right here, negative two-thirds. You really got to understand the slope. The slope is the rise over the run, okay? So to make this kind of, um, you know, not until a full lesson on slope, this, is a, this right here requires its own lesson to really understand this, but effectively, 
when you have a negative two thirds slope, the rise is negative two, meaning that it's going down two and the run, so the rise is always uh, the line either going up or down. If it's negative, it's gonna go down negative two, and then the run is always to the right, three. So this line is gonna go down two, which is because of course this is a negative two rise, and then it's gonna run three to the right. So from two, from our y-intercept, we're gonna go down two, that's negative two, and then we're gonna go to the right three, that's our run, one, two, three. So there's three, here is two. So now this is our second point that's on this line. Okay, again, the slope kind of um, is a set of driving directions starting from the y-intercept. So we're going down two, a negative two rise, and then we have a run of three. There's our second point. And now we can kind of put this together. There's our two points, and we can draw our line going through. Here is two, here is three. This is our negative two rise, and our run is always to the right three. So this would indicate our slope. And here, finally, is the graph of our linear equation written in y equals mx plus b form. All right, so if you got this right, that's pretty good. Matter of fact, I will give you a nice, lovely little happy face, an A plus plus, a 120%, and multiple stars to make you feel extra special today. So that's very, very good. But... Um, if you're struggling with anything here, you need to go back and fix it, okay? Because these are core algebra skills. So typical things that um, I think more students will struggle with is how to solve for a particular variable in an equation or formula, okay? So get really good at that. Um, if you need additional help with any of this stuff, you can find um, all this in any one of my algebra courses in my Math Help program. Plus I have a ton of extra videos on this on my YouTube channel on the slope, on how to graph, even how to uh, solve for a specific variable as well. But hopefully this video helped you out. And of course, that is the case. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.